Welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brethren and sistren, to the Tuahado Bible Study Podcast. As always, you can share, you can support, and you can subscribe. You can subscribe wherever you find this, be it Transistor, Anchor, Spotify, Google, Apple, or YouTube, and that will help us out. You can also support by Subscribe to the newsletter at aksum.substack.com. That's aksum.substack.com. Or contributing at any level at patreon.com slash tawahado. That's p a t r e o n.com slash tawahado. And you can share the link with your friends, family, enemies, and strangers to wherever you found this. Or the very words of God that you hear read aloud by me today. We continue our journey through the very wise scroll of revelation or scroll of apocalypse or scroll of uncovering we're reading in the king james version because it's friendly to the public domain here we are in verses one to four of chapter 13 and i stood up upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So we have these two characters here, the dragon and the beast. The dragon, we've said before, is the devil is satan is the slanderer is the the enemy or the accuser and whereas the dragon is the heavenly agent the beast is the earthly agent whereas the dragon is the spirit the beast is the flesh at one point it may have been egypt or babylonia especially in this context it was romans and we'll get to that at the end remember the time period in which this is written before the close of the first century and definitely after Jesus Christ's ascension. So sometime between 33 AD and 100 AD, very roughly speaking, scholars will narrow it down further than that. I'll leave it open. But the question I would like to ask you, if you're an American, is it possible that functionally the beast is the American regime. If you're a Greek, is it possible that Constantinople some ways acted like the beast? If you're an Ethiopian, I'll ask, did Aksum in any shape, way, or form act functionally like the beast? Verses 5 to 8. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we recall that in the last chapter, we had the heavenly war involving Michael. So now we see the war continues, but now the war is on earth. And here you have a continuation of the blasphemy, which is cursing or reviling Yahweh. And he who bears the name of Yahweh, Jesus is Yahweh saves or Yahweh's salvation. And Jesus is the paradoxical lamb here, but he's also our shepherd. And those who follow the life that he led as an example for us are the martyrs. The foil of the martyrs or the witnesses, the foil of those written in the book are those not written in the book. Those who are fanatics or fans of the beast of the earthly empire. 
So all who seek earthly power to possess greater and greater territory and dominate people and to oppress people, even if it's to establish the kingdom of Israel, are going to be functionally like the beast. Verses 9 to 12. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. In verses 9 and 12 here, just because you have an ear doesn't mean that you're able to hear. In a simplistic note, we know that some people are born deaf. We know that some people become deaf later in life. We know that there are jockeys, gnomes, gargoyles, and other idols or statues in Eastern religion that all have ears and yet cannot hear. The living God has no ears, and yet he is able to hear. So it all goes back to the function of hearing. And if you hear this message you'll know that if you live by the sword, you'll die by the same means. And if you live by spreading captivity, you yourself will become a captive. You can point to instances in Ethiopia and America nowadays of people who seemed to be on top just a few years ago who now may be at the bottom. In the Galatian lexicon, you would say they are reaping what they have sowed. Verses 13 to the end. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. First and foremost, this has nothing to do with the plague, which is plaguing everybody on the planet Earth right now. I'm not going to use the key terms that will get the machine learning algorithms to take down my programs, as we've been seeing people on various social media taken down for various reasons. I'm not interested in being controversial. I'm interested in rooting out the false teaching of people who will make you think about microchips here and planting there. No, 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 no. None of that stuff. This 666 six, six, or 603 score and a six uh, score is 20. So three times a score is 60. So 666 six, six is Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus. He reigned in the Roman Empire from around the 50s to the 60s. And anyone who was functionally like him, let them also wear the shoes. For this wisdom is written for all ages, even though it is about a specific age and a specific time. The people who have the mark of the beast in them are those who fear death. Those who fearing death are moved by death to serve death by becoming sycophants, minions, henchmen, and servants of Nero and everyone who is functionally like him, an oppressor, a terrorizer. And so you don't want to have the mark of the beast? Forget about microchips. Focus 
on not fearing death, on realizing that the Lord is your shepherd, even though he is a slain lamb, and that if you place your trust in him, he will protect you. And so he will render justice against the Neros of the world and all of their minions. And just like the war in heaven was won, the war on earth will be won when the Lord Jesus returns to judge all those who have ever lived and all those who have ever died. Glory to God for all things.